Okay. So I love starting whatever I my talks with stories. So let me start with a story. This is a story of five monkeys that are in a cage. And uh, there is a there's bananas that are hanging from the ceiling and there's a ladder. So what's the first thing a monkey would do? The first monkey would climb up the ladder to get the fruit and the scientists who are studying them sprays all the monkeys with water and they're like wet they don't know what has happened they sit down then the second monkey starts going up again he sprays them with water now pretty soon the monkeys learn that we shouldn't go for the bananas because if i go for the bananas i'm going to get wet so then he takes one monkey out puts another monkey and the monkey doesn't know anything right it starts going up and the rest of them pull it down even before the monkey gets there so the monkey doesn't understand why they are pulling it down but it says whatever and pretty soon they replace all the monkeys with brand new monkeys who have never gotten wet for reaching out for the monkey for reaching out the bananas but they have learned not to reach for the bananas even without getting wet and i think that a lot of times in our lives we are like that at least i have been like that you learn from somebody else somebody says are yeah don't start a company see that guy he lost everything he has don't do this because look at that person they've lost everything they have so without experiencing it ourselves a lot of times we get ourselves into a place where we are not trying now there are some people now out there who are trying either we call them crazy or they just don't know what they're doing and it's only when they are successful we say hey i knew this guy or i knew this gal but when they are trying we are not by them so even van gogh you know when he died he wasn't that famous it's most of the people we recognize their fame when someone else has recognized it so for us at ink a journey is about how do we find these out of box stories and how do we create a platform for them so that we celebrate people's success when they need it we give them the support when they need it you know somebody will say okay i'll give you money somebody will say i'll give you office space but who's going to stand by them and say i'm with you no matter what i'll connect you to what you need so that's really what our journey is about um people ask me what ink stands for ink is for innovation and knowledge but really to me what it is it's a metaphor you know whether we write or print we need ink but ink is nothing in itself you know it takes shape in the hands of those who create something with it so that's what ink is you know our success is a cumulative cumulative effect of the success of those who stand on our platform so when someone like a sunita krishnan stands up and tells a story and people in the audience react and she says i'm rescuing women out of prostitution i don't have a permanent home for them and the companies and the others who listen to it give enough so that within 18 months of giving that talk she has a 3 acre campus where all the women have a permanent place to live that's when our purpose is served so it's about finding the stories nurturing them telling them how to tell their story and making it successful we are from a land of storytellers i mean we all had our grandparents who taught us through stories i mean i remember my grandfather during summer telling us stories but we forgot the art of storytelling we just as a as a whole continent asia we forgotten the art of storytelling how many people can you think of who are enigmatic speakers for the billions of people that we have there are a handful who know how to tell a story and that's really our purpose is that to find these great people who are doing the work and getting them to tell their stories you know as a journalist i can tell their story but that's not interesting for me how do i get the person who's doing the work to tell their story be it a village person or a really famous person it doesn't matter but how do i get to who they are so one of the questions people ask me and that's what neera asked me is that how do we find these speakers how do we pick these speakers what is it that we look for and what do i look for you know i do collect and connect people and what do i look for 
So I thought I would do it in an acronym. You know, I have 12 years at Intel. So one of the things you learn is everything is an acronym, you know. So the acronym I want to use today is HOPE. You know? So the first thing for me that attracts about someone is humility. You know, they are so accomplished, but they don't even know it, nor do they flaunt it, nor do they seek for attention. And they are doing their work with equal dedication when someone is watching or not. To me, excellence is what you do when no one is watching. So we look for people, and I'll give you examples. Let's take Prakash Amte, for example. You know, he's living among the tribals from the time he was a kid. His sons, his daughters-in-law, they are all serving people in the tribals. And the man is so simple. You know, to me, I felt I met a modern-day Gandhi when I met him. You know, he's funny, he's, uh, you know, he's doing so much, but really doesn't seek anything. And it's not just people who are, you know, in the NGO sector. Even the most famous ones, if they are willing to tell their story in a way that it relates to me, I'm interested. So when we interviewed James Cameron, he was talking about being a truck driver. He talked about how Hollywood, you know, um, sort of supports bad behavior. So that's why you have to behave a certain way for people to take you seriously. But he said when you work with scientists, and at that time he was building uh, the submarine to take him to the Mariana Trench, he said when you're working with the scientists, there has to be a lot of humility because your life is going to be in this person's hand when you go down that ocean. So you need to understand everything. When you haven't figured it out, you need to work with everyone. So it's that ability to have some humility when you're telling the story, that you're not the master of the universe, but you are a player in it, is what the first thing that interests me. And where did I learn it? It's I, You learn it very, very young. I learned it through my father, I learned it through my grandmother. My grandmother fought for freedom, she went to jail, but she never talked about it. I found out about it much later, of all the things she has done. So the stories around us, that's what first inspires me. Then the O in hope, that to me is originality. You know, how is this person going about the, solving the problem, but in a little bit of a new way? So say, for example, take Mansukh Bhai, and he lives in Gujarat, and he makes everything out of clay. He makes a pressure cooker out of clay, pans out of clay, a fridge out of clay. And what's original about his thinking is that, you know, when you have a fridge that's running out of clay, which is being cooled by water that's running through the pipes, it's not going to be like an electric fridge that can keep it cold for like 10 days. So he says, this fridge keeps food cool as long as food ought to be kept cool. That means you shouldn't eat more than two-day-old food. You know, that's an original way of, you know, defending your position, you know. So I look for that. And I've learned this, you know, when I was uh, doing my MBA in Portland State, I took a minor in theater arts. Because in India, I never had a choice. If you're studying one subject, that's all you're supposed to study. But when I went there, I could take class in any uh, discipline. So I took Shakespeare, I took literature, I took theater. And one of the things they teach you in theater is to look at the same scene and write it 10 different ways. You see a man taking groceries out of a car, make 10 different stories out of that, you know. So that original way of thinking, you know, look, you're looking at the same problem, but you're looking at it a little differently. It comes from a very interdisciplinary approach. That's why for us at Inc., it's important to have a neuroscientist followed by a musician, followed by an artist, followed by a writer, followed by, uh, you, you know, um, an archaeologist. Because great ideas come from listening to something that has nothing to do with what you're doing. Okay? So that's that originality. How can we think originally and, uh, and not just succumb to whatever... Uh, it's supposed to be. And in hope, the third component it, to me is persistence. You know, especially in the world we live in, in online world, it's very easy to start something. You know, you just open, you get a free blog post and you can start posting a WordPress or blogger or whatever, you can start posting. But 
the, those who are successful are those who are very persistent, who don't give up that easily and who try again and again and again all kinds of approaches. And to me, some of the speakers that really showcase this, there are two women who are really brilliant in the ink, uh, uh, you know, uh, history. One is Aisha Chaudhary. You know, this is a girl I met when she was 14 years old. And uh, her father introduced me to her and said, she's my source of inspiration. So I met her and she suffered from, she suffers from this lung disease, which has, uh, you know, her lifespan is very, very short. So, uh, but she never, you know, talked to me as though her days were numbered. So she said, uh, I want to give a talk. I said, great, you know, what do you want to talk about? Her talk was about five reasons to be happy. I mean, imagine a person whose days are numbered talking about five reasons to be happy. And she came, I invited her two years later when nobody thought she would last for that long. And she came with her oxygen tank and everything. But when she gave the talk, she didn't want to have her tank. And for 10 minutes, she gave her talk without a tank. It's like you surviving with no oxygen for like 10 minutes. It's that persistence, you know. And her father told me every time I asked her to give a speech, her health would become better, you know, because she was very particular about giving a great talk. And more than persistence, it's also preparation, you know. This is what I learned when I was at Intel, is that if we had one demo, we prepared for it for four months. And if the screen failed, there was a backup. If that failed, there was another backup. And when we did our rehearsals, Andy Grove came two days ahead of time, cleared his calendar, prepared for it, gave the talk over and over and over again till we solved every little problem. So that's the third thing I look for in a speaker is, are they willing to spend the time to prepare? It's not just like you come and you know exactly what to say, but are you willing to think about that unique perspective, that unique way of looking? Are you willing to prepare with us? You know, that's the third thing I look for. And the last thing, really, which is the most important thing, which you have witnessed a little bit on the stage earlier, and there is, you know, the E could be anything. It could be energy. It could be entertaining. It could be effervescence. But it's a very expansive way of looking at a world. Don't make your dreams be realistic. You know, at least in our dreams, we should be really out there. So it's wonderful when you talk to people and they say, I'm going to build this. I'm here, but this is what I'm building. You know, it's that vision. It's that excitement. And you know what? That will keep changing as they go. You know, nobody I know has started with a business plan and executed it. It always changes. But you have that vision for something huge. So, and this also I learned at Intel. What we would say is that this was, I'm talking 94, 95 time frame. We said we should be the people who define e-commerce. Now, imagine in 95, there's hardly any internet connection in US. And we decided we were going to be big in e-commerce. So there was about three of us who said, okay, now we are going to do something called an e-commerce day a year from today. We don't know what that means, but we are going to do it. And today we are going to send invitations to the top thousand analysts in US, around the world, to come to one place. We book the theater, everything is done. We don't even know what we're going to do. So the point is, in that year, you figure out what you're going to do when there is that big vision. So that's what it's about. So the hope, the fact that you have a humility, you sort of have originality, and you have a perspective, a point of view, a persistence, and that expansive way. So that's really, to me, what storytelling is all about. So I just want to end by saying that we believe that the travel should be from imagination to impact. You have to have a huge imagination. And then you should build the skill set and create impact. And that's really what we are doing. So I want to end by saying that, um, you know, there's a movie called The Holiday, which is, uh, well, I think it's that movie. There's a Kate Winslet and this older gentleman, they're talking to each other. And he's a screenwriter. And, uh, you know, very old screenwriter who won Oscars, etc. But today nobody cares about him. So they both are having a chat, and he says to her that, you know, in a movie, there's always the heroine, and there is the best friend. 
said, why are you acting like the best friend when you're the heroine of the story? And she says, at least in my story, I should be a heroine, right? And that always stuck with me. And to me, it's very important for all of us to have the dream to be heroes and heroines of at least our own story, if not somebody else's, and make it come true. And that's the kind of people we look for. Thank you. My question to you, Lakshmi, good morning. And my question to you is that uh, it was wonderful hearing about uh, ink. In fact, I would like you to share with us bloggers, as bloggers, as passionate bloggers, as, as bloggers, as passionate writers, we, we, we bloggers are, how could we contribute to the cause of ink? Uh, actually, it's great because we, if you go to inktalks.com, there's a lot of stories. And what's really important is for these stories to be known. There's a lot of people doing really great work, but not enough people know about them. So you can go see the stories you like and do your own version of it. Because this is not our IP by any way. So we would love for all of you to write about them, what it does to you, or why are you inspired by that story as much as possible. Uh, my name is Saloni. Uh, I have a question for Lakshmi ma'am. Uh, you mentioned one of the aspects as humility, but uh, today's world is all about marketing. So even if you're good, if people don't know you, you're probably just languishing somewhere. How do you kind of balance the both? Because it is important to do some amount of self-advertising as well, otherwise people won't know you. Sure. When I say humility, I don't mean nobody should know about you. No matter how good you are, you should have the humility to be available to others. And the second thing is we are always looking for people who haven't been discovered a lot of times. We sort of have an 80-20 rule. We kind of say get 20% of the people that everyone knows that they want to meet, but get 80% of the people that are doing really great work, but they may not be known. So uh, to me, humility is the way you carry yourself. You could be very famous, very well known, or not known, but the way you treat people who work for you. That's what I, I always look for how somebody treats somebody in a restaurant, how they treat their driver, how they treat the lowest possible person that's around them, how they treat them. That's what it is.